I'm happy to be joined now by Dr. Jim Gammy, who's well known to many of you from Baltimore. Jim, thanks for joining us. Delighted so, to be here. So, you know, it's been a phenomenal meeting, and we're, I'm learning a lot, and I'm not even a surgeon, so I'm learning. But let me ask you, because you have been intimately involved in a, in a lot of really bringing data to us that substantiates what we should and shouldn't be doing. What do you think are some of the important areas for research in mitral valve d disease or procedures that we ought to address? Um, I think there are uh, numerous uh, research opportunities uh, that, uh, that we're looking at uh, right now. In fact, uh, as you know, I'm quite interested in outcomes right, research. Right. And um, in the tradition of uh, Dr. Codman, we um, want to uh, uh, follow our patients and know exactly how they do. Uh, the STS database until recently has actually been the poor stepchild in terms of uh, uh, data regarding uh, valve disease. We've had uh, a lot of data on coronary bypass surgery uh, with the data upgrade that happened about uh, two years ago. We now have a rich source of uh, data to look again at uh, mitral disease. As an example, we now know uh, what the etiology of the operations were for. Uh, we know exactly how the uh, patients were being uh, repaired, how, the, how their operation went. We now know how to identify patients that are getting reoperations for right. failed uh, prostheses. So there's a host of uh, information that's just waiting to be unlocked, and we've really only started to scratch the tip of so the iceberg. Is, is that where we're gonna? Is that where you're gonna go in and start looking at? You know, here's question one, two, three. That's precisely correct, and we have it's uh, a, a team uh, a team effort with a, a lot of uh, notables right. in the field right. who are uh, participating in this. So, yes. so Jim, do, are we going to get to the point where we will have, and I, I think the outcomes of that is really important. I mean, you, you really want to tell the patient this is going to be the best thing for you, and we know it's going to be this longevity of what we're doing if we do it right. So are we going to come to the point where we're going to know for certain disease conditions or abnormalities of the mitral valve which approach is the best? You see what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I'm hearing... 20 or 30 different approaches, it seems like, to everything. Are we going to get to that point? I think we will. I think with time, uh, with, uh, with data, we'll, we'll learn what works best and what's most durable. And it's not so much just what happens at the time of surgery for mitral repair. You can get a patient out of the operating room with no MR, right. but what happens five, as you well know, what happens five or ten years later. So, Data becomes king in the new, in the new scheme of, um, of the government, outcomes in government care government-based care. That's not a political statement. It's just the way it's happening. Um, are, are we going to have the same data on physicians, surgeons? We already have some of that, and I don't mean individually, but as a group, that is also equally important. Um, I think that's it's been helpful to look at it at the surgeon level, uh, as you, you uh, may know. It. It was, we it. have, yeah. and it was uh, it was a little bit of a political uh, fight to get it done. But you know, ultimately, I think cardiac surgeons have been in the lead in terms of Absolutely. data transparency, and Absolutely. I think we all feel that simply putting our results out there is the right thing to do, and that it will make us better at what we do for our patients. That's super. Well, you you've done a great job, and I appreciate it. You know, I've shown shown your stuff not and surprisingly not the surgical data but I show I mean the surgeon data but your pulmonary artery pressure data and all that stuff so it's, because you're you're really leading us toward appropriate timing before the hearts hurt right. by and the what MR. You, what you know is, and, and what some people know, is that it's not so much the what happens uh, right at the time of surgery, but it's the subsequent five years Absolutely. and the falling off and the differences in, uh, in when the patients come to the operating room. So thank you very Super much. Super, Russell Jim. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Good it's to be with you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you.